Venipuncture is often a frightening experience for the patient. For many patients, the anticipation of the procedure is worse than the actual drawing of the blood. The medical assistant should take time to explain the procedure to the patient in an unhurried and confident manner. This helps to alleviate the patient's fears, which relaxes the patient's veins. Relaxed veins make venipuncture easier to perform and result in less pain for the patient. Here are the supplies needed for venipuncture with the vacuum tube method. Disposable gloves, tourniquet, safety glasses, adhesive bandages, cotton balls, antiseptic wipe, evacuator tubes with labels, plastic holder, double pointed needle, biohazard sharp container, and laboratory requisition form. Hi, Elizabeth. Yeah, hi. Mm -hmm. My name is Jamie, and I'm going to draw your blood today. Okay. Okay. Um, just need to verify your first and last name for me. Okay, it's a... Uh... Greet the patient and introduce yourself. Identify the patient by asking the patient to state his or her full name and date of birth. It is important to confirm that you have the correct patient to avoid collecting a specimen on the wrong patient. Compare this information to the information in the patient's chart. If the patient was required to prepare for the test with fasting or medication restrictions, determine whether he or she has prepared properly. Sanitize your hands. Assemble the equipment. Select the proper tubes for the test to be performed. Prepare the vacuum tube system. Remove the cap from the posterior needle using a twisting and pulling motion. Insert the posterior needle into the small opening of the plastic holder. Screw the plastic holder onto the lunar adapter and tighten it securely. In this demonstration, we will be drawing a lavender purple top tube. This is the most common tube used for collecting a specimen for a complete blood count. We will also be using a gold serum separator tube. Vacuum tube needles are packaged in a seal twist apart plastic container. The needle used with the vacuum tube method consists of a double pointed stainless steel needle with a threaded hub near its center. The needle is coated with silicon enabling it to penetrate the skin smoothly. The anterior needle is longer and has a beveled point designed to facilitate entry into the skin and the vein. The posterior needle is shorter and its purpose is to pierce the rubber stopper of the evacuated tube. The posterior needle has a rubber sleeve that facilitates as a valve. Pushing the tube stopper of an evacuated tube onto the posterior needle compresses this rubber sleeve and exposes the opening of the needle, allowing the blood to enter the tube. When a tube is removed, the sleeve slides back over the needle opening and stops the flow of blood. The patient position for venipuncture is especially important to the successful collection of a blood specimen. Proper positioning allows easy access to the vein and is more comfortable for the patient. The patient position depends on the vein to be used. The most common site for venipuncture is the anacubital space. The patient should be seated comfortably in a chair. The arm should be extended downward to form a straight line from the shoulder to the wrist with the palm facing up. The arm should be well supported by the armrest or a roll towel for support. A venipuncture should never be performed with the patient sitting on a stool or standing. The patient may faint and injure him or herself. If the patient appears nervous or has fainted in the past from venipuncture, it is best to draw the patient when they are in a supine or semi-reclined position. An important step in the venipuncture procedure is the application of a tourniquet. The tourniquet makes the patient's veins stand out so they are easier to palpate. The tourniquet acts as a dam which causes the venous blood to slow down and pool in the veins in the front of the tourniquet. This pooling of blood makes the veins more prominent so they are more visible and can be palpated. The tourniquet should be applied with enough tension to slow the venous flow without affecting the arterial flow. 
A tourniquet that is too tight obstructs both the venous blood flow and the arterial flow, which may result in a specimen that produces inaccurate test results. Never leave the tourniquet on an arm for more than one minute at a time. Thoroughly palpate the selected vein. Gently palpate the vein with the fingertips to determine the direction of the vein and to estimate its size and depth. Cleanse the site with an antiseptic wipe. Cleansing should be done in a circular motion starting from the inside and moving away from the puncture site. Allow the site to air dry. After cleansing, do not touch the area. Anchor the vein. Inspect your needle. Position the needle at a 15 degree angle to the arm. Rest the backs of the fingers on the patient's forearm. Ensure that the needle points in the same direction as the vein to be entered. The bevel of the needle needs to be pointed up. Tell the patient that he or she will feel a small stick. And with one continuous steady motion, enter the skin and then the vein. You may feel a sensation of resistance followed by a release as the vein is entered. When the release is felt, you have entered the vein and should not advance the needle any further. Stabilize the vacuum tube setup by firmly grasping the holder between the thumb and the underlying fingers to prevent the needle from moving. Place a cotton ball slightly above the puncture site and carefully withdraw the needle at the same angle as that for penetration. Immediately move the cotton ball over the puncture site and apply firm pressure. To activate the safety, push the shield forward with your thumb until you hear an audible click which indicates the shield has been locked into place. Immediately discard the plastic holder and attach needle in a biohazard sharps container. Cooperative patients can be asked to apply pressure with a cotton ball on their arm for one to two minutes. Remove the cotton ball and inspect the puncture site to ensure that the opening is sealed with a clot. Apply an adhesive bandage to the puncture site. Label the tubes with the patient's first and last name, patient's date of birth, time the blood was drawn, and your initials. Make sure that the patient is feeling fine, not dizzy or lightheaded before they stand.